Well, guys, it's hard to believe. It's time. It's time. You've been up here almost six months. You've, we've learned everything from you we could possibly learn. And, uh, and now it's time to say goodbye. It, uh, we don't want to see you go. We, uh, we like the company. We love the friendship. And like we said the other night, you know, we're like brothers and we've lived together closer than families <laughs> in many ways. So thank you very much. And we wish you, you know, the, all the best in the hours ahead and soft landing. And we cannot wait to see your faces back on Earth. Спасибо, Майкл. Спасибо, ребята. Шесть месяцев пролетело очень быстро. И сейчас даже грустно, скажу так, вот как будто из родного дома куда-то уезжаешь. Уже настолько привыкли, настолько прижились. Ну и, конечно, мало времени для того, чтобы все сказать. Но вы сами все видите, сами все знаете, сами все прекрасно понимаете. Я хочу еще раз сказать вам большое, большое, большое спасибо за то, что вы всегда находили нужные слова, за то, что всегда могли в любой момент прийти на помощь. И мы жили единым целым настоящим коллективом. Вот нигде, как на станции, нельзя понять, что такое здоровый, хороший коллектив, здоровый организм. А мы единое целое. Спасибо, Майк, ты здорово сказал. Мы родственники и братья. Хоть наши семьи сейчас к нам будут ближе. Спасибо, хлопцы. Okay. Set to the hatches. PPO2 is 144 at this time. Okay, it's going to take a while. Okay, now um, proceed to the leak check for the transfer hatches. Departure uh, farewells here in the lab. That 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 tape came down successfully. Yes, it did, and we really appreciated it, and it was very very nice. Okay, great. We'll uh, we'll put that tape in the reuse bag then. Okay, sounds good. Again, you're looking at video that was uh, recorded uh, just a few minutes ago by Sergei Volkov, who remains on board the International Space Station with Mike Fossum and uh, Satoshi Furukawa, as uh, Samakuti Ayev, the Soyuz commander on the right, Ron Garin in the middle, Barasenka on the left. One final opportunity to say goodbye to their colleagues. 
before the hatches uh, were closed at 4.30 p.m. Central Time uh, about 10 minutes ago in the uh, first step leading uh, to the undocking of the Soyuz uh, that will take place just under three hours from now at 7.38 p.m. Central Time. Samakutiaev uh, there wiping down the outer ring uh, to the hatch uh, between uh, the Soyuz spacecraft and the Poisk module to make sure uh, no particles of debris uh, are present that uh, could interfere with a clean undocking of the Soyuz spacecraft. The abdominal situations book is prepared. Okay. Let's uh, go ahead and start then and continue talking to us, please. Okay, the KVD is in the closed position. Kakate valve is uh, being put in the open position. Install the KKD to the open position. The KKD is closed, uh, moving, uh, tra uh, translating to the SR. Okay. Closing the SABO hatch. The SABO hatch open indicator is off. Look, the crit. Hatch is closed. On. Stefan. Andrei, запиши давление было. Andrei, please write down the bow pressure. Eight. 46 millimeters MCC Moscow. The SR bow hatch is closed. The LED is not on. And we wrote down the pressure. And with a final wave, the hatch was closed again at 4.30 p.m. Central Time. The Cavadebo S2 indicator S4 is not eliminated. And we, we have um, at 38.15 um, physical separation. Undocking confirmed at 7.38 p.m. Central Time. Very good slide. And um, watching the bracket. Undocking occurring over northern China at 7.38 p.m. Central Time. Honey, Space Station, you look great backing away, guys. It's been great sharing space with you. Safe journey and soft landing, my friends. Godspeed from the International Space Station. Stay on the ground, Mike. Yes, you are the poor boy. The poor B selection. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come and get so. Yes, sir. Waiting for the next depot. The CO1 uh, never disappeared. Very good, very clear. Final farewell uh, words from S Space Station Commander Mike Fossum, wishing uh, the crew on board the Soyuz TMA-21 a soft landing and Godspeed. To the ground, yes, that's the ground. The Earth. One minute away from a separation burn that will be initiated by Soyuz Commander Alexander Samakutiaev to increase the opening rate from the International Space Station.
looking right down the barrel of the Poisk module to which uh, this Soyuz was attached since April 7th. This is the same docking port to which Dan Burbank, uh, Anatoly Ivanishin, and Anton Shekaplerov will dock to on November 16th. Since indicated on the internal conversation, I'm saying that it's not at 40. We were waiting for the physical separation. It was less. We have DPO activation. Uh, we are watching DPO activation. And the time. We can feel. Separation burn now in effect, a 15 second burn of the Soyuz engines. This increases uh, the opening rate uh, to the point uh, at which the deorbit burn will be conducted uh, at 10.05 p.m. Central Time tonight as the Soyuz will uh, move to a distance of 12 kilometers away from the International Space Station. With the undocking of this vehicle, uh, Expedition 29 has now officially begun under the command of Mike Fossum, along with Sergei Volkov and Satoshi Furukawa. And you can see in this view as it darts uh, back and forth uh, amongst the clouds over the Pacific Ocean, uh, you can see the Soyuz TMA-21 spacecraft as it uh, continues an opening rate from the International Space Station, eventually uh, to be at a position some 12 kilometers away from the station for the deorbit burn uh, that is scheduled two hours, four minutes from now. Should I do it later? And uh, we now have video from the landing site uh, on a bright, uh, sunny day with temperatures in the mid-60s as uh, the crew uh, is now uh, in the process of being extracted. Again, the Soyuz landed on its side. That should be uh, the commander of the Soyuz, Alexander Samokutyayev. Yes, indeed it is. Uh, being helped out by his flight surgeon and other support personnel from RSC Energia. Josh, it appeared to be uh, almost a bullseye landing for the Soyuz. Uh, that we were told that the first helicopters uh, landed uh, almost uh, not quite two minutes after the Soyuz itself touched down. Uh, so that would uh, tend to enhance uh, the swift extraction from the crew as we uh, await further reports from you on that. Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, you know, you've done this uh, quite a number of times, and a lot of people don't realize what these helicopters do is they sort of arrive at the targeted area and hover for a bit until they get a, a confirmation of exactly where the Soyuz has landed. But we actually did not hover at all today. We uh, came straight into the landing site. Uh, about four of the helicopters had already landed in front of us. Um, so the medical tent was already being put up as we got here. Uh, which was sort of an indication of how on target today's landing actually was. But they have gone ahead and gotten uh, the parachute uh, torn down, and it looks like they're pulling out yet another crew member as we watch. 
And that would be Ron Guerin uh, flashing a big smile as he's extracted. Uh, and uh, we mentioned uh, before, Josh, uh, that uh, sometimes uh, landing on its side uh, would tend to slow down the extraction of the crew a bit uh, as opposed to back in May when uh, Dmitry Kondratiev, Katie Coleman, and Paolo Nespoli landed upright and were extracted in, in the uh, preferred manner. Uh, we can see Dr. Steve Gilmore there, one of the flight surgeons, uh, but Ron Guerin looks to be in good shape. Yeah, you're exactly right. When these soil uses land on their side, of course, uh, you know, no one can predict exactly how they're going to roll. Uh, and anyone that has ever seen inside a soil use knows that it is uh, very tight quarters that uh, the crew members sometimes are basically shoulder to shoulder right on top of each other. So depending on how the soil use ends up, um, it's a little hard sometimes to get them out. So it takes just a few minutes to really get everybody unstrapped. Of course, they want to make sure they do it in a delicate manner to make sure that the crew members aren't, uh, you know, falling on top of each other as they get out. Uh, but they're continuing to make good progress, considering that they've already got two crew members out and this thing landed, what, 20, 25 minutes ago. It's, uh, it's quite impressive. And uh, never shy of ceremonial trappings. Uh, we're looking at a picture of uh, the great designer, Sergei Korolyov and Yuri Gagarin. Uh, that was carried uh, inside the, the capsule itself. Of course, uh, this spacecraft was dubbed Gagarin uh, prior to its launch uh, back on April 5th, just a week shy of the uh, launching of Yuri Gagarin as the first human in space. A good view now of Ron Garin. Uh, he looks to be in uh, very good shape, uh, smiling broadly. And uh, you probably have a better view than we do, Josh. Uh, what are you seeing? Now, he, he looks to be in great shape. You know, it's, uh, it's always amazing to see these astronauts and, and cosmonauts come back to Earth after being up there for six months. And, uh, you know, I, I think it says a lot about how uh, the International Space Station program and our international partners have worked to uh, keep these crew members in shape while they're up there on orbit. I think quite a bit has been learned about how the human body uh, reacts to being up there for that long. And you can see how well these crew members now come back to Earth and how well they feel. Uh, you can see that some of those precautions and uh, those efforts that we take with our crew members uh, are working. And uh, Josh, as you're speaking, uh, Andre Barasenka now uh, in his reclining chair. So all three crew members are out of the Soyuz, uh, appearing to be in very good shape. And uh, we'll be watching uh, the television as uh, it becomes available to us, uh, as the crew members uh, have an opportunity to spend a few minutes uh, beginning the adaptation to a gravity uh, environment for the first time in five and a half months. They'll be carried into the medical tent. And uh, if you could. Uh, Offer a few thoughts, Josh, down there at the landing site as to what takes place once the crew gets in the medical tent and what uh, what then uh, lies ahead as uh, they make their way back to Karaganda. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually glad you mentioned it because, you know, typically this medical tent is set up about 100 yards away. Today, this medical tent is no more than probably 30 yards away from the, where the Soyuz landed, so it's not going to be a very long trip as these crew members uh, probably within the next few minutes will be uh, lifted up in their chairs and moved over to the medical tent. Uh, that is where the uh, flight doctors will do sort of a um, an eyeball exam of exactly how uh, the crew members are doing to make sure that they're feeling okay. Uh, and then they will go through the process of taking off their launch and entry suits, which uh, takes a few minutes. Uh, they'll put on some more comfortable clothes and then they will each go to their individual helicopters. They're sitting just a few yards away and uh, all of us will fly back to the city of Karaganda about two hours, uh, which is where the uh, welcome ceremony will take place. So uh, this, uh, all these procedures here uh, on the ground are continuing as uh, all this uh, ground personnel uh, get these crew members uh, set up and uh, welcome them back to Earth. Well, uh, it was a, a textbook uh evening in terms of uh, all of the activities, uh, the crews uh, saying farewell to one another up on orbit, the uh, undocking of this Soyuz spacecraft several hours ago, and of course uh, the deorbit burn and all the activities associated with the module separation, the deployment of the parachutes. We, uh, we actually were devoid of audible uh, communications uh, between uh, the crew and uh, mission control in Korolyov outside of Moscow. However, uh, we were fortunate enough uh, to be receiving reports from the visiting vehicle officer here in Mission Control, Josh, uh, who uh, was in touch uh, with the Russian ballistics personnel and ultimately uh, re heard uh, that everything was going uh, by the book and that uh, two-way communications had been established uh, with the crew uh, during the final minutes of their descent back to Earth.
And uh, let's go back uh, to Josh Byerly at the landing site. Uh, Josh, uh, the crew uh, entering the medical tent, as we can see. Oh, yeah, they're, uh, you know, like we talked about, they've gotten aware this is just a very systematic process, so they've already moved them in there, and as you talked about, they'll start getting uh, more comfortable. This, this medical tent really is quite closer uh, today than it typically is, uh, so it wasn't a very far walk for them to go over there, but uh, Joel Montalvano, who is our uh, director of operations over here in Russia, is uh, moving over toward the castle. Uh, as I'm watching him, he has a long list of inventory items that uh, he's going to retrieve. We're now seeing replays of the uh, Soyuz landing. Again, uh, these views captured uh, by television cameras aboard uh, the closest uh, search and recovery helicopters in the vicinity of the landing site. You can see uh, how, how close the Soyuz landed uh, to a bullseye target, basically, uh, the uh, first uh, all-terrain vehicles already at the spacecraft within seconds after touchdown. One of the uh, spacecraft technicians from RSC Energia wiping down uh, the hatch at the very top of the Soyuz spacecraft uh, prior to the time that it was uh, opened to begin the extraction process, uh, the Soyuz having landed on its side. Again, you're watching a replay uh, of the initial opening of the hatch uh, that took place uh, a short time ago as uh, the search and recovery teams uh, and RSC Energia technicians uh, began the process of uh, extracting uh, the crew from the uh, descent module of the Soyuz TMA-21 spacecraft. You can see uh, peering inside uh, the hatchway uh, how cramped uh, the quarters are. However, uh, the Soyuz landed uh, uneventfully. An excellent view in this replay of uh, the soft landing engines uh, firing just a, a split second before touchdown to help buffer uh, the uh, initial impact of the landing under the uh, main chute of the Soyuz. And uh, one of the Russian Mi-8 helicopters landing uh, within seconds thereafter to begin uh, the process of the recovery of the crew.